I bought this power hacksaw a couple of years ago for 50 bucks, and I've gotten my money's worth out of it, but it's starting to give me some trouble. These saws were made by Covell and sold both by Covell and through Sears, badged both as Craftsman and Dunlap. This one's a Dunlap, which I think puts it circa 1950s. So at this point, I'm realizing that this piece has a little taper on the end, and that actually takes up the play in this arm. So really, I could just put this back together, but I want to see how that actually works, and you know, might as well actually give this thing a good once over anyway. In order to get this piece off, I need to get this shaft out, and that looks like it's held in with a taper pin, which I'm guessing was driven in this way which means I need to drive it out that way. Looks like this whole piece comes off. So this is cool. It's basically just tapered pins on either side fit into a taper socket there. As it wears, you tighten this one down to adjust it. So really that's all I would have to do to make this work mostly right. But there's still a few other issues with it and that would make for a really short video if that's all I did. The paint stripper did, we'll call it a reasonable start of getting the paint off. I think I want to just go ahead and sandblast everything, get all the nooks and crannies cleaned out, so I need to tape off all of the machine surfaces. And before I sandblast, I need to fix this piece. Ground a pretty good V-notch in there, get this ready for brazing. I'm going to screw it onto this piece to hopefully keep it from warping. So I gave this a good coat of soot from the torch to keep the braze from sticking to that. Get the whole thing preheated here first. So I went ahead and sandblasted those, got them cleaned up, and everything else too.
want to give everything one more once over, try to get any remaining abrasive off it, and just do the best job I can prepping for paint. I'll be honest here, I did not have good luck painting this. The first paint I tried didn't really work in terms of coverage and quality. I ended up switching paint, but this is a tool I'm going to use rather than sit around and look at, so I'm not that concerned about it. I don't know, I think that bronze bearing is probably still okay, but while we're here, might as well change that one out. These get drilled for oil holes. It's kind of interesting, one of the holes for this little badge was never drilled. There's a punch mark for it though. Well apparently the reason that that wasn't drilled is because it's really hard right there. And I don't have the right size drive screw. This pulley is super wonky, and it's threaded on, which is probably the worst possible way you can do it. The threads on the shaft look like they were just cut with a die. You can see that thing really doesn't run true at all. So, I think I'm going to make a new pulley. I rammed up a quick sand mold, just used some pieces of appropriate size scrap for a pattern, and my sand was too dry so it broke out, but for what I need, this should work.
So the other issue with this old pulley is there's nothing to set the end play here. So I made up a little bronze thrust washer and then just drilled and tapped a shaft. This is oversize. Ever so slight end play. Really happy with that. Now, whole works can go in the four jaw chuck. Not very far though. So that gear doesn't clear the back of the jaws. But it does fit in the collet chuck, and I spent some time tweaking the position of it and bumping it around. So I have it running within about half a thousandth. Got this groove roughed out, but something started to shift around a little bit there. So I pulled this apart. I actually wanted to flip this around. So I'm turning it in the right orientation for what it'll be mounted. And before I put this back on, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my keyways. I was already on center from cutting the keyway, so this seemed easy enough. Of course, I can't get all the way through it like that, so I'll just move over and get the last few threads in this way. So it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. So this little lifter mechanism has these little plates on it with teeth. You're supposed to engage with this piece, but the teeth are worn off to the point where they no longer engage. I think I'll use some lawnmower blade for these. It should hold an edge. So this has gotten too thin for me to put it up on top of parallels. I still need to take it to thickness. So I'm going to take one from Joe Pye's playbook here. Got some scraps of aluminum. So it looks to me like this hole lands just inside of that bevel. I don't really know how far it is from the end because I don't have the end of that one. So I'm just kind of making them look about the same. Go with that. I split these apart and now just evening up the back edge. I 
tempered these things to kind of a dull red, and I think they ended up being somewhere around Rockwell 40. The 40 hardness file kind of scratches it. 45 definitely bites into it, which is right about where I want it. I want them to be pretty durable, but I want them softer than the piece that they mate with because I'd rather make these again than try to make that one. And that one is 55. 60. So somewhere in the 55, 60 range. So these are a little bit softer than that. Pretty happy with that. I'm trying to figure out what this little hole is for. Looks like it should be for a switch. It's got an auto shut off. Except this piece is on backwards.
I did it this way so I only have to set the lathe up for threading once. I think these were originally round head screws, but the reality is Philister head screws are just that much sexier. Since I'm gonna replace this Tommy bar anyway, I might as well beef it up, since that one obviously wasn't strong enough. Don't really wanna move this hole any closer to the end, so I'm just gonna plunge it with an end mill to open the hole up. Now I just have to flip that around and do it again. I always kind of struggle with what to do with these little badges because painting them never makes them look that good and leaving them alone never really looks that good. I don't know. What do you think?
And for the one that's got the little inclusion or whatever that's really hard and I can't drill a hole there, do a little super glue on there. And then I just ground down to the head of one of the drive screws. Shh, don't tell anyone. The saw wouldn't have originally come with a stand. So while this one's ugly, it's not necessarily wrong for the saw and it works. So I'm just gonna clean it up and keep using it. And of course, one thing led to another, and I sandblasted it and decided to give it a quick coat of paint. One of the things I don't like about this saw is it does tend to just dump oil and metal chips all over the floor when you're using it. So I got a big commercial cookie sheet and painted it blue. This is a fairly heavy gauge aluminum, but dropping pieces of metal on it, it's going to need a little bit more support. I did have to move the motor back one notch to get the belt to line up right. Well, let's put the first dent in this chip tray. Well, that ain't running right. It turns out the gib screws were a little bit too loose. That's a lot happier. So one little addendum here. Before I even finished editing this video, the pulley spun itself off of these threads. Chewed them up in the process. So I drilled out the pin, I pinned the gear on, made a new shaft, bored out the hub, and put a taper pin through it. Now it runs a lot better and shouldn't cause me any more problems. <laughs> 